Good morning guys and welcome back. Sorry about the state of me this morning, but I do not have time to dry my hair because I'm off on a very exciting little one night stay with my best friend, Kate. Basically for my birthday this year, she got me a stay at The Pig. And I don't know if any of you in the UK know about The Pig hotels, but they're basically the most beautiful country hotels. And we're actually staying in the one in Studland. She's been before and she was absolutely raving about it. And I was like, oh my God, that just sounds so amazing. And then that's what she got us for my birthday. So I'm actually about to go and pick her up from the train station. She's like come out of London via mine. And then we're gonna drive there together and it's just gonna be so lovely. I see Kate loads, but we don't often get like really, really good quality time together. So I feel like a night away is just gonna be so amazing. This is where meal prep comes into its own because I already had my overnight oats in the fridge ready to go. I'm literally heading out the door to the train station now to get her. Hopefully I've got everything packed. We were praying for some blue skies because there's a really nice seven kilometer walk, which she'd kind of earmarked as something to do today. So fingers crossed we can do that. So we've just got to our room at the pig and it is literally the cutest thing ever. Just such a good use of space as well. We've got a little kind of dressing table area and the view out of this window is just so beautiful. And that's where we're gonna go and walk tomorrow because there's a really nice walk there. Just so stunning, all the little touches. And then in here, we've got the bathroom, which is again, just gorgeous. So much inspo for my house. I wish I had like white marble sinks. They just look so, so lovely. Nice shower, toilet. There's Kay, hello. <laughs> And they actually left me out like a little birthday biscuit thing. So cute. Cause Kate said that it was my birthday. <laughs> but yeah, so sweet. So many little thoughtful touches. I wanted to give you a little update because I realised we've been filming little clips but not actually spoken at all. But got here yesterday and oh my god, have we had the best time. It's so nice. It's literally, it's literally so insane. nice. And we just went out for breakfast earlier and they've just got like the most it's so Annie, like they had, what's your drinks that you kefir. do? The kefir and the, the shop. I've never actually done that before. Well, it I've done was, it once quite intense. we lived together, but it it's so intense. intense. But just so Annie, all the little details of like things that yeah. were at breakfast, it was so nice. Oh, because what else did they have? They had, yeah, loads of things like really gorgeous, like organic kefir, yogurt, like delicious granola. Like we had poached pears and like mm. apple and stuff. Oh my God, it was just so dreamy. Mm. And everything about the way it's set up with like all the little terracotta pots and stuff is just like, Oh, yeah, the I details are amazing. And like when we came back from, we had dinner here last night at the pig in the restaurant, which is the food is just insane. So good. And when we came back to the room, they'd like turned down the beds and they put a little nighttime tea bag oh, on the bed. A little water, like <laughs> a little cold water <laughs> with a glass and we stuff. We very much appreciate all the little details. I think we're like, we could move in at this point. Yeah. It's just so Well, it's sunny. kind of like you can because it is like an amazing, huge house. Yeah, I feel like it sounds like we're on commission for the pig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sign up. <laughs> Wish we had a discount code to offer. <laughs> Honestly, just to, even we, we started having breakfast and I was like, oh, the radio's on. Like yeah. in the background, I was like, you could come and stay here for like two weeks and 100%. feel like retreat, relaxed, mm. lovely vibe. Mm -hmm. But it was funny this morning, Kate had booked like in advance <laughs> this really nice like saunas on the beach. We'll like, go down, we'll do like a cold. I booked it for 8 a.m., <laughs> meaning we'd have to wake up early, early to, get to get there. there. And then I was like, we're going to see, we're like, seize the day. And then we were going to bed last night. I was like, I'm just going to cancel it. I yeah, like, I, I was like, yeah. Also, yeah, <laughs> like, when we woke up this morning, it was just chucking down with rain. So I was like, it's not really we the time have, you want to go. We would have honestly, because we had like a couple of glasses of wine last night. So we would have woken up this morning just mm. being like, 
oh my just God, not that's feeling why it. the hell have we done yeah, that? So yeah. it's spitting a little bit, but we are going to do a cliff walk. And let me just show you because you can actually see out the window. I think I might have shown this yesterday as well. We, not that you can really see with the raindrops. <laughs> it looks but way rainier than it actually is. It looks stunning. And we're going to try and go over there. And did you say it's a 7K? I think it's 7K, yeah. I've got it on my, I've got a little All Trails app. I feel so like you're like a... Good. Well, I didn't actually mean to. It was, oh uh, God. <laughs> I bought a subscription last year when I was doing more hikes on holidays. And then I forgot it was renewing. And then oh. suddenly like £40. Yeah, but it's useful. Like useful It is thing. useful, but I didn't really want to spend £40 again so i'm just making the most wait of it. 40 pounds for, for, for an, an, an annual subscription oh, oh well okay it was you yeah, know fair. we just weren't well, expecting well, it to come out of your account <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it today. so we're gonna go on a lovely walk and then we booked this place and i can't remember the name shell, shell bay shell bay for lunch it's beautiful also just to say where we are we're at the pig in studland is studland right? bay Sudland yeah bay. it's called pig on the beach oh, it's but it's just beyond bournemouth it's like on the way to Dorset. Yeah, it's been perfection, mm. let's just say. But we just thought we'd check in with you. Um, we'll try and get a few little clips later on in the day and update you. It's funny, we bought loads of outfits and now I'm just in exactly the same oh, thing. Oh yeah, as I overpacked completely. But we're going on a potentially little bit of a rainy walk. So, you know, we'll come back, get a nice outfit for lunch. And then <laughs> we're done. This is like a proper UK walk. A, a little bit blustery. <laughs> a little. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be able to hear nothing. Wow, wow, wow. Well, it's Sunday and I am feeling so tired today. I am just generally not a very like tired, sleepy person. And I am really, really struggling with energy today. Having said that, I made it to the gym. I actually went to the bakery this morning, kind of early doors to see Megan and Niall and Winnie and Carl, who is our friend. I feel like he's definitely been on this channel before quite a few times, probably back like last year and things. But he has moved up north now and he was down for the weekend. So I thought, I'll go meet them. I had a coffee and managed to make it to the gym. But God, was it a slow session. I was just struggling big time. And when I feel like that, I do try and just listen to my body. And I was like, well, it's clearly not my time to like really, really push myself. So I just did slightly lighter weights, went through the motions, did a few exercises, hopped on the treadmill and walked for a bit. I feel good that I've been, but I, now I'm like, I need a third coffee for the day. It's just not my day. And I had a great night's sleep last night. I'm putting it down to where I'm at in my cycle, which is absolutely fine. I think the message is just don't fight it when you feel like that. As you know, on Thursday night, I went away with my best friend, Kate. We had honestly the best time it was just the cutest thing ever i think i said that she'd got it for me for my birthday and we stayed at the pig which was just so stunning if you have the opportunity to stay at one of the pig hotels in the uk definitely do it's actually the second time i've been to a pig hotel but the first time i've stayed there and we just felt so so lucky to be there they're just so stunning attention to detail is just i can't honestly fault it if you want to go somewhere and just have like a real escape from kind of busy stressful life is just the place to be also me and kate just have the best conversations i think we are at such a similar point in our life and kate if you don't know you should actually go and follow her on social media because she is a psychological health coach she has a psychology degree and a doctorate she's actually started her own coaching business she helps a lot of people get through things like uh when you're feeling really stuck with the point of life that you're at just basically bring bringing massive improvement and change into your life. And we are so aligned on everything. I mean, that's obviously why we're so close, but she's also really passionate about fitness, nutrition, wellness, and that aspect of it and how they kind of link in together. And I feel exactly the same, even though obviously my work is slightly more on kind of the fitness side of everything. What that means is that at some point we are gonna combine the two and I'm really hopefully gonna be bringing her onto my coaching platform, hopefully quite soon. She's got a lot on at the moment, but we've been planning so much and I just think it's gonna be the best addition to everything because at the end of the day, my coaching style is super holistic and with that, it just means we kind of really look at the bigger picture. Never gonna be someone who's like, just eat this amount every, every day and do this and then you'll get results 
because I truly, truly believe that, you know, you have to put so much time and energy into developing your lifestyle to actually get where you want to be and for it to be sustainable, which is the main thing. You know, you just have those people in your life that you're like, they are bringing so much to my life and just very grateful for that. But anyway, today we have had a slow morning. Like I said, I'm just feeling super tired and I'm definitely gonna go and make myself another coffee. But I had my food shop arrive this morning. It's really funny because Elliot's job is to do the food shop and we order our food shop on Amazon Fresh, which is just absolute game changer. They don't have it in the whole of the UK, but if you live in a place in the UK where they do have it, because it's kind of more like Aldi little prices, but comes like very quickly. Elliot's way in Ibiza, the food shop arrives, He's done the food shop as he's meant to do every week. And I'm like, you've missed out genuinely half the shop. So I've just had to do another online food shop because I was like, do we not eat this every week? Do we not eat this every week? And there's just loads of really random things. So I don't know what he was thinking when he ordered it this week because he's usually quite good at it. So we've got more food arriving. I put the oven on to roast my sweet potatoes for my meal prep this morning. And I was like, there aren't even sweet potatoes here. But what I'm actually gonna make, because we bought it last week and I ended up putting it in the freezer because we didn't have time to use it, is a big bolognese. And I'm gonna pack in loads of different veggies and it's gonna taste seriously good. So I'm gonna try and make that today. I'm gonna go and get some of the extra autumn -y bits, little pumpkins down from the loft and try and just automify the house. I need to show you something I bought yesterday as well. Also, we have both been doing major clear outs and we have like four of these bags worth of things. I've been ruthless with being like, I'm not gonna wear that, let's get rid of it. So they're gonna be going out probably on my Vinted. So I'm gonna link my Vinted in the description box because there's so much really nice stuff, which I just personally don't wear anymore, but I feel like a lot of you guys will absolutely love like lots and lots of active wear, even brand new things. So I've dug out the autumn pumpkins again. I'm pretty certain it was from Amazon and it was really inexpensive and I actually think that they are great. If I find them again, I will link them. But if I recall, I paid something like 15 pounds for them all and I've had them for two autumns now. This is the third one. I just think they're such a cute little set of white pumpkins. So we're gonna find somewhere for these and I'm probably just gonna put them where I put them last year, to be honest, which is kind of near our window. And then I have this little set, which were from Hobbycraft, sort of like rattan, more like straw pumpkins, which I always awkwardly put in the same space. Okay, so we've got this like little shelf here. I just don't know what to put on it. If you guys have any ideas, I'd actually love to hear from you. It's really, really not very deep. Like it's literally like that. Every time I put stuff on there, it just looks kind of awkward. And I feel like I should need something to sort of permanently fill the space, but I always just awkwardly plonk the little pumpkins in there. So realistically, that's probably exactly what we're going to be doing this year. You see, they just look awkward. They just, <laughs> they need to be bigger, but actually width wise they're right. But I just don't really know what else to do with them because I was trying to like arrange them in a cuter way and it just doesn't really work because they're all the same size. So they're probably just going to stay like that for now. I'm going to make it a priority to try and fill this with something. You know, even things like candles will look cute, but obviously you can't burn candles here because of, you know, the, the fact that it's got a roofy bit. Yeah, they look cute, but just also completely lost at the same time. You know, I was just looking at this being wonky and then I thought that's actually a new addition since I last vlogged. I only actually picked this up a month ago. It was from Danelm. I'm not a huge fan of material it is because I think the material's a bit like, Hard to explain because you really can't see it from afar and you probably won't even be able to see it up close if I show you. It's a little bit like granny lamp shady. <laughs> but I feel like from afar, it looks just quite cute and like a little olive green pleated lampshade. And the one we had before was white or just like off white. And I am actually trying to add in more color to this house because as you know, when we bought it, the people who we bought it off had just done the whole thing super neutral, which I totally makes sense because, you know, they wanted to sell it. But what it's actually meant is it makes it hard to add any color in because you're used to seeing it really neutral. Because it's very costly feel with like the original fireplaces and things. I don't think it really lends itself to sort of bright colors so much. So I'm just trying to add in a few extra bits of 
muted colors so i just thought the lampshade was really cute also the other one is just in the loft so i can always swap it out also this so cute my dad had a photo shoot done of my dogs and just look at how cute that photo is so <laughs> we got it for christmas and i thought do you know what? we don't have a photo there so i'm just gonna chuck it there for now but it just reminds me of them all the time and i just miss them so so much i'm thinking with the pumpkins we can just make a little display here and i think it should look perfect just adds a little bit of an autumn detail i don't know if i'm someone until we have kids that's ever gonna decorate their house for halloween properly but some little autumnal touches I can definitely get on board with. And how cute is that? I mean, it's maybe a little bit crowded actually. Could temporarily not have that photo on there. Okay, now I'm actually not sure. Right, I'm thinking for now that is a little cuter and just not as busy. <laughs> Yesterday, I actually went to Dunelm. Do you know what I was thinking? When we moved into our house, I used to go to Dunelm literally all the time. I don't know if you guys have been here since then and remember that. We don't have that many good interior shops near us, but we don't have like a Zara home or an H&M home or anything. And I actually do really rate their stuff. I think the quality is good and they have a lot of stuff. It's just very inspired by designers and things now i don't know how to even explain that properly but they have some really good collections and stuff that actually just goes really well in our house so i went by there yesterday to look to see if i could find a new light for our kitchen and i did actually find one that i liked and because the box was really ruined i got 10 percent off as well so it was a hundred pounds which i think for a light fixture based on the fact i've been looking at brands like pookie which I would love to have, but do I want to spend that much on a light fitting? I don't think I do. <laughs> this one I actually thought was really reasonable. So what it is, I'm not going to get it out of the box because I haven't actually unwrapped it yet, but it's basically these three auburn colour. I would love to have three like, you know, hanging pendants, but I think the cost of doing that, because I think that would require us to get all the electric sorted, the ceiling to be like replastered and everything like that, is just like not something we're really interested in investing in right now. So this is three pendants, but they all hang from the same thing, which is sort of similar to what we've got now. The one we've got now, I do like, I just don't think it actually works in this house. It's very, very modern. So I think I'll probably end up putting it on Facebook Marketplace and then try and swap it out for this, which could be a good alternative. I think the other thing that i picked up yesterday because for christmas the year before last i hate to say it my dad got me and elliot these prints and me and elliot are really into the formula one and there's a silverstone and a monaco one and i thought they would look really good in elliot's dressing room i've never actually bought frames for them so i found these yesterday the only thing is they're quite weighty but i think they will still be good. They're basically a solid wood frame and they're actually, they look very expensive. I mean, they were 16 pounds, which is probably a bit more than what I wanted to spend. But I thought they looked lovely and it could look really cool with this print inside and two of them. And it kind of makes the prints a little bit more sort of in keeping with our home as well. There's also not much wood in that room at the moment. So I feel like adding a little bit of wood with the frames could look really nice. I also found this frame, which I'm kind of obsessed with. Part of me is like, does it look a bit like child's bedroom? But it's this olive green frame with this bobbin detail on the side. And it was reduced, as you can see, it's eight pounds 40. They only had one in this size but I actually love it. Goes super well with our house because we've got quite a lot of olive green bits now. But yeah, like I said, there was only one, but we do have a print which we need frame for. I'm just trying to think where this would look good. Strangely on our house, we have quite awkward wall spaces for small prints. When we redo our bathroom, which is a whole other conversation, it's possible that it'll go well there, but it's quite funky and modern. Basically, our friends bought us back this print from Japan and Elliot loves sweets. So this was kind of the idea behind it. It's just this very cool, it's actually not print. I've just realized by looking at it, it's a pencil drawing and it's these sort of Japanese sweets, which are really, really cool. But again, the obvious place this would look good because it's the room that's probably the most sort of modern. In Elliot's dressing room, there's not enough wall space 
and he's got actually very awkward wall space in there but i thought that would look quite cool in this frame but i'm not even sure if that's gonna work anyway i've got lots of ideas as you can tell <laughs> and then i also have got a new cushion which is gonna go on this sofa and it's from House of Neutrals. They very kindly sent me this cushion cover along with a couple of other ones, but I've not kind of, you know, got the pillow insert or anything for them. But yeah, it's gonna go on the sofa and I think it will just add a lovely little pop of brown to the sofa. There's only one cushion on this sofa that has that kind of like terracotta or brown color in. And that's, I don't know if you can even see it in this shot, but that's over there and it's still mainly cream. So like I said, I'm just trying to add more muted colors into our super neutral home. I feel like this is just perfect because we've got our fireplace, that kind of tan brown leather chair and things like that. And it will just add perfect little bit of color onto here. See, I'm really happy with that, but they just have the most gorgeous cushion designs and quality as well. And I have bought quite a lot of our cushions from there before I was gifted that one. So super nice to understand that one. Like the blue one over there, I think a green one, black one. In fact, I'm just thinking that one might also be from there. Anyway, we have a ton of cushions from there. And the other ones they've sent are also really gorgeous. Right, a third coffee of the day. I'm hoping this might make me feel <laughs> a little more human. I'm actually gonna make a really quick jar of pickled red onions. If you haven't made your own pickled red onions before, honestly give it a try because it's the easiest thing and it took me like years to actually try myself because i think you look at it and think that's going to be complicated and it's so so simple all you need is vinegar and a lot of recipes call for white vinegar but i actually am going to use a mixture of white vinegar and apple cider vinegar some hot water something like sugar or honey i'm going to use honey just because i've got a lot of it at the moment also salt and then a little jar to put them in and i've got a red onion that needs eating like it's got some slightly dodgy bits on so we're gonna use that and then tomorrow on my list of things to do is to film number three of my autumnal gut health friendly high protein recipes which i've been posting on instagram go and check them out if you haven't already because they're just such good simple recipes they're just lovely and warming for the autumn and i'm gonna do a curry recipe it's gonna be super high protein because i'm gonna use lentils instead of the rice and it's gonna be a chicken based curry i want some lovely pink pickled onions to put on top the sharpness of pickled onions just cuts through dishes in just such a lovely way i feel like if you're a foodie you'll understand what i mean if you've got a bland meal i feel like pickled onions on top can just make such a difference so what I'm gonna do is half vinegar and half water, just to make sure the water is, I would say hot because you want the sugar or the honey in this case to dissolve. So that's the water. I might use just under, just because my jar is a little on the small side. And then half apple cider vinegar and half white vinegar. I have actually read that you can use pretty much any vinegar, so. Just use what you have, but maybe you cross-reference that as well. I'm gonna pull that in, but first of all, I'm gonna add in the honey and the salt. So we've got one tablespoon of salt, and then I am gonna use one tablespoon of honey. This honey is such a lovely one from the brand Odyssey, but my only criticism of it is it's so solid. I mean, it's a very high quality honey is not very easy to use <laughs> like for example in my overnight oats i can't really use it because it's not runny enough so it just doesn't mix in too well and um, as you can see it's literally solid <laughs> but i'm just gonna mix that in and hopefully it comes out the spoon well and then i'll just add my vinegar and then when it's cooled down a little the mixture i'll add in a finely sliced red onion and then i can just show you how beautiful they look because all the water goes lovely and pink and the onions, like even the white bits turn really nice and pink. Yeah, that is some solid honey. Right, then we're just slicing up the onion and we're gonna go nice and fine. You know what? Something I really, really wanna do is go to a knife skills like, class and learn how to chop properly. To be honest, I know what to do vaguely. Like you're meant to kind of, you know, make sure the blade is like against your knuckle. But, you know, just going somewhere where I can really, really practice it. And someone saw the finesse. But going somewhere where I can really practice it for a bit. And oh, the onion, I swear, I'm so sensitive to onion. Ah, 
God, it's killing me. Do you know what? I'm just looking at this jar thinking it's not actually going to be big enough for the whole onion. So maybe I'll stop there and I can use that for something else. Oh my word. That is no joke. Usually I would mix, make the whole solution first, but I'm actually just going to add the onion first just so I know how much of the onion I can fit in and I'm not overflowing. I don't actually think I'm going to be able to add in all of this onion. I knew this jar was going to be a bit small. Anyway, we're all good. And then we'll get that vinegar in as well. Usually I would actually mix the vinegar in at the start, but I just wanted to check how much onion I actually have space for in this jar. You can already see that the mixture is turning pink. Well, the liquid will be cloudier because I've used half apple cider vinegar and honey, but it doesn't mean it'll be any less effective and they'll still be really, really delicious. And I actually could have sliced these onions a little finer as well, but you know, they're gonna be great, they're gonna be great. And we have a jar of pickled onions and in half an hour, these will look super pink and ready to eat. So for the last two weeks, I've actually on a Sunday prepped a, I guess kind of like a whole meal. And if you know me and kind of my routine around meal prep, I'm more of what I like to call an ingredients prepper to my clients. I'm someone who likes to prep things like four salmon fillets for the week or a whole batch of roast sweet potatoes or loads of steamed veg and then it means I can kind of like build my meals vary depending on like what I'm in the mood for on that day rather than making full you know boxes of like salmon with rice and veggies because I might not be in the mood to have the same thing every single day but last Sunday I made chicken soup a batch of that for the week and it was just so so useful for us to be able to have on the nights but we were just working a little bit late and didn't have so much time to cook dinner so I'm gonna do the exact same this week because we have mints in our freezer. So I've defrosted that and I've ordered some bits basically to make a really delicious hearty bolognese. And I actually thought I'd talk this recipe through with you a little bit because this is a recipe, I mean, who doesn't love a bolognese? Especially in, I say this obviously it's Italian, but in the UK, <laughs> it's such a staple, wholesome family autumn winter meal very comfort food vibes but what i love about it is actually a really great recipe that's very macro balanced and you can also make it into a recipe that's really really great for your gut health as well it's just got so much potential because you can pack in so many different things and that's exactly what i'm going to be doing so we've got mushrooms that really need eating they are like looking a little past their best onion carrots i'm gonna use the little bit of that leftover red onion that was from the pickled onions we've got a sweet pepper we've got celery garlic chili some wrinkly tomatoes <laughs> i'm gonna add those in a tin of chopped tomatoes yes that counts as a variety of plants and we've got spices and um herbs and things like that and also tomato puree so I actually love it for that reason. But the way that I would serve this to myself now would be slightly different from how I would have used to have eaten it. I could really delve into this topic because I've kind of thought about it a lot over the last six months. And I do feel like it can be a little bit of a toxic thing that I see a lot in women. I think a lot of us love to say, oh, I'm such a huge eater. I've got a huge appetite. I have to have carbs. Car like if I don't have carbs, like I don't feel full. Just to preface this by saying that literally used to be me. <laughs> These words have all come out of my mouth. And when I used to live with a group of girls, I think what I used to do is go and serve myself pasta and bolognese. I'd literally pile the pasta onto my plate thinking like that's the bit that's gonna keep me full. I need carbs to be full. I'm not gonna be full without them. I've got this huge appetite. I need to kind of satisfy that big appetite. When actually it's just so, so incorrect. Yes, we need carbs. Um, as you can see here, I will absolutely be having pasta with this, of course, and cheese on top. But unless you've got something that you need a hell of a lot of fuel for, the pasta amount that I need is actually nowhere near as big as what I used to think that I needed. And and actually feeling full and satiated from my meals comes from the protein in here. So in this case, the beef mints and also the amount of fiber in this meal. And that's gonna come from the veggies. So I now balance it so I have much less pasta and more of the thing that's gonna keep me full, satisfied, help my fitness goals and help to maintain my body and my gut health. So it's just to say you can, if you're on a fat loss or gut health journey, as an example, 
you can eat all the meals that you love and crave and all those comfort foods. You don't need to totally change how you eat if you don't want to. It's just about balancing your plate a little differently. Hopefully all of that makes sense. But yeah, I've totally reframed how I view nutrition and food over the last year and a half. And I just feel like I have such a healthier relationship with it now and I'm not filling my plate with these things that are just not so nutrient dense and I actually now go for well this is actually an organic pasta which I don't always buy last thing to add and I don't always do this when I cook bolognese but I have it so I'm going to use it but this amazing brand Freya sent me a load of their bone broth and I've had them before and I love the chicken one so much but it's going to be absolutely perfect in this recipe instead of doing a beef stock cube and water but obviously if you want to make a bolognese you can absolutely use a beef stock cube or a veggie stock cube bone broth is great because it's obviously much more nutrient dense and it also has a really good amount of extra protein in <laughs> not that we necessarily need more protein in this brand by the way I haven't tried them yet but they just brought out their own protein powders. It's like a chocolate and a vanilla one. And I'm so intrigued to try them because they are definitely a little more gut health friendly just looking at the ingredients in them. So maybe we'll give those a try at some point next week. And then the other thing just to mention in terms of things that I look out for now is when I'm buying things like chopped tomatoes, making sure the tin of top chopped tomatoes is basically 100% chopped tomatoes this one is actually from Lidl and I did read all the ingredients in the back and it has a little bit of citric acid in but it is 99.9% .9 chopped tomatoes whereas tins of chopped tomatoes are often tomatoes in tomato juice I believe in tomato juice it's like from concentrate sometimes so do really read the back of your tin of tomatoes but for me the less ultra processed stuff that i can consume the better but for me i want to prioritize having processed and not ultra processed foods in my diet and just to say processed foods are just anything that's been through a process <laughs> doesn't necessarily make it a bad food for example beef mince has been through a process to make it into mince ultra process is when you look at the ingredients and you're like wow there are loads of things i don't necessarily recognize in here it's been through a hell of a lot to make it what it is essentially another thing just to add before i start is i now am so anal about rinsing my veggies and fruit something I never used to pay much attention to. And I think I used to actually look at people that did it and think, oh, so like you don't need to be doing that as if it's like over hygienic or something. But obviously you don't want to be ingesting all the pesticides that are used to grow food that go straight into your gut. So I now rinse literally everything. is bubbling away i'm actually just going to turn it down but i do feel like bolognese is one of those things that the longer you cook it for the nicer it tastes so so i'm probably going to leave that for honestly about half an hour just because i have the time this evening so we've got a little while while well, that's cooking still so i'm going to spend some time just doing extra little bits of meal prep for tomorrow. I actually have some oats that I really prep like halfway through the week because my overnight oats, as you guys probably know already, are just like my essential thing to meal prep each week. I just feel like having breakfast ready to go and a breakfast that I know keeps me full for ages. It's got protein in, loads and loads of fiber, loads of really good plants in. It's just the best thing for me. I've been prepping some sweet potato. It's literally in the oven roasting at the moment. And just to add to those bits for this week, it's so gonna be a bit of a smaller, more concise meal prep. I'm gonna do some salmon fillets, steam some broccoli and asparagus. I'm also gonna cook four portions of this pasta just to make a super, super convenient dinner. And that's obviously gonna go alongside the bolognese. Here's the meal. 
meal prep that I've done for the week. I don't think I mentioned earlier, but I made a load of oats halfway through the week. So I've still got some in the fridge. So they weren't really necessary. And it's not a huge prep session for me, but like you can see, we've got four portions of bolognese. I've got a little less pasta than Elliot has. Obviously he eats a bit more than me. Two lots of sweet potato. I think I'm gonna have to split this one into two containers. Some salmon, some steamed greens, and all of that will just save us so, so much time this week. I feel like I've kind of ended up doing a full little Sunday reset with you guys, which was not even the intention, but because I'm home alone today as well, I just thought what nicer way to like go into the new week than feeling just totally sorted, like washing done, clean, empty dishwasher, meal prep sorted, kitchen cleaned, all of those things that just mean you wake up just feeling good. You know that saying, tidy space, tidy mind, that rings true for me on such a level. So, so I would highly recommend doing a little bit of a Sunday reset. If I'm in on a Sunday, it's honestly just like top priority. Anyway, I'm in a shower and put my feet up and I will catch up with you guys tomorrow. I'm having one of those days where I feel like I'm ticking off some kind of interior things or just like housey bits that I've wanted to do literally since the day we moved into this house today and it's just making me feel so good. One of those things was putting the TV in our bedroom. This is a very Elliot thing. I'm really not fussed about having a TV in our bedroom, but I do appreciate if we want to watch different things. It is quite nice sometimes, but I just think TVs look so ugly. And I realize that I'm sounding like my dad and my stepmom <laughs> when I say this, because they were really into like hiding TVs. We even had like TVs that my dad had put on like a thing where it like comes out from behind a cabinet when you want to use it. They're very, very into hiding TVs. But yeah, I just think it looks so ugly in the room, but I do appreciate sometimes it's really nice to have two TVs in the house. So yeah, we've wanted to have it on this wall bracket for ages and Elliot's dad came around to pick up something and he is just super handy. And we were like, Robert, <laughs> what are your thoughts on putting the TV on the wall? So he's done it for us. And the only thing I didn't think about is where the socket is. So I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. So this is it basically, <laughs> very underwhelming, but this is the bit that I hadn't really thought about, but it's, honestly not that obvious uh, obviously i'm kind of we're really focusing on it right now but elliot got a white cable so it's just like yeah not as obvious it looks so much better than being on this ugly black tv stand that we've had for ages so that's gonna go on facebook marketplace i thought maybe it's better if i show you from this side of the room and this mirror and this picture again <laughs> temporary things uh like this mirror is cracked but we just don't have anywhere else for it and i think we want a mirror in this room but i think maybe on this wall here. And then we've got a picture which we really need to put up. But honestly, that was just something we've needed for ages. But I don't know if you guys agree with me with the fact it's just never really gonna look that nice to have a TV in here. But Elliot has said he'll consider compromising on a smaller size TV. There's something to think about. I have just had such a great jeans order. Now, this is something <laughs> I've tried to perfect for the last two weeks. My sister has got jeans from Abercrombie. They have a curve love section on their website. And it's basically for people that have struggled with like having a waist that's small enough, but they also want the jeans to like fit their legs properly. And I definitely fall into that category. My sister definitely falls into that category. She's obsessed with them. And she's honestly been telling me to get them for like the last four months or something. And I just haven't. Finally got them, ordered totally the wrong size, but I was like, I can see the vision here. You have to order your exact waist size there because it's totally accurate to the exact size of your waist. And it's taken me a while to get to grips with this. So third order in, and I found like my perfect slouchy fit mid-rise jeans, which I'm gonna show you. So this is the pair that I have fallen in love with. They are just, to me, the perfect jean if you want a mid-rise fit jean, which is what I wanted. I wanted them really nice and baggy, but I don't want them to fall down. So this to me is just a perfect pair of jeans. I will link them below because I think if you have the same issues as what I was just explaining, they are a literal game changer. And I have ordered four pairs <laughs> of like different ones. I've ordered a pair that's a little bit like tighter and smarter. So I wear a waist 25, which I would never wear in a normal pair of jeans because they would fit my waist, but nothing else on my body. And I just think they are such a lovely fit. The only thing that's annoying, and I generally just find this a bit annoying about jeans, is I'm 162 centimeters, which is five foot four. And that is like the starting point for regular length. 
but it means that the shorter length, like the petite length, is usually a bit too short on me. So I'm kind of like small, but like not that small. So I'm actually average height for a girl in the UK, but like I would say I'm a little bit small. So I've gone for the regular length because when I've got shoes on, I want them to be like almost on the floor. But if you are shorter than me, 162 centimeters, my sister wears the shorter length and they work wonders for her. So yeah, I just thought I'd show you these because I've got loads of questions about them. So I've worn them in a few bits on Instagram over the last week and they are honestly a dream. This cardigan is also a new thing and I'm just loving a kind of tighter fit sort of cropped cardigan at the moment. It's exactly the same material as the khaki one that I showed you in the last video, which was ASOS, Topshop at ASOS. And this is almost the same. It's just like a little bit of a different style at the bottom, but the material is identical. I'll also try and link the cardigan below, but I can guarantee it's probably sold out because the ASOS Topshop section literally sells out in no time at all. If I look the next day sometimes, I'm like, wow, as if that's sold out. Cause I'll get asked to link things. Then I go to link them. I'm like, I can't even link it. I've actually bought quite a few new items of clothing recently. So maybe in the next haul, I'll do a little proper like show of all the jeans and tops and things like that. So in next week's video, maybe I can show a few of my new bits, all the new jeans and things like that and try them on properly for you. Sorry, just gonna prop you up here. In the next video, we're actually having a downstairs toilet redone and I'm gonna try and film bits of it. We've got someone in to do it obviously because there's no way I'm trialing fitting new taps and things like that myself. We're keeping our original toilet, but we've just got a problem with the tap, which I'll go into lots more detail about in the next video. But I think it's gonna be super fun. I'm also gonna be trialing out wallpapering myself, which is gonna be interesting, let's just say. But I'm actually really excited to film that because it's gonna be a big change in our house. So I thought I'd show you quickly is the onions. I've been eating them this week, but the onions since I obviously last filmed a clip for you they were not pink yet and um, all the water goes super pink and just beautiful and they taste so good i would highly highly recommend giving them a try because they're just so simple and add such a punchy flavor to anything like i made a gorgeous coconut curry uh, like with chicken thighs and like lentils and stuff at the start of this week and just adding those on top is like oh, just makes the dish so wow. I'm gonna wrap this video up here though, guys. Thank you so much for watching another video. I'm honestly loving being back on here. So there will be another video next week. I'd love it if you subscribe, if you wanna support my channel and stick around and I'll see you next week.